I'd like to now graph linear equations using an, the intercept method. So I'd like to use the intercept method. It lends itself in certain situations, and I'm going to try to share with you when that's the case. Um, do I use it all the time? Not as regularly. But it's, it's a method that you should recognize as a plausible one, a, a very, very good one. Here is, here is what it would look like. The first couple examples, I'm going to have the variable terms on the left-hand side and the constant on the right-hand side. The intercept method says find the x-intercept and the y-intercept by, and what that means is to find the x-intercept, you let y equal to 0. Let's go ahead and do that one. You'll, you'll understand that. So this one is called, uh, let's put it right here. This is called the x-intercept. And so um, what I do is I let y be equal to 0 right there. So 2 times 0 is nothing. So what I do is I often just put my hand over the term that's got y when I want to find the x-intercept. I put my hand over that, and what I'm left with is this 5x equals 20. Again, 5x equals 20 because 2 times 0 is nothing. And I divide both sides by 5, and I found that, find out that x has got to be equal to 4. Again, 5 times 4 is 20, plus 2 times nothing is nothing, equals 20. And let's plot that ordered pair. That's right there. When x is 4 and y is 0, that is called the x-intercept. Let's go ahead and find now what's called the y-intercept, and that's when x is 0. So let's write that down. That's called the y-intercept. And so when x is 0, 5 times 0, when that's gone, I'm left with 2y equals 20. 2y equals 20. And when I divide both sides by 2, I find out that y has got to be equal to 10. So I'll come on over here, and when x is 0, y is 10, and I have the y-intercept. And, you know, that's a pretty easy thing to do, to cover that term up and to divide both sides by 2 to find out what y is, or to cover this up and divide both sides by 5 to find out what x is. And so, I personally tend to just graph those two ordered pairs and draw a straight line between them, and I'm done. Let's go ahead and look at one more, um, and then I'll share with you when I might not use intercepts. Here's another one. So I have 3x minus 4y equals 24, and it doesn't really matter. I'd like you to understand which one is the x-intercept and which one is the y-intercept. Here's the x-intercept, here's the y-intercept, but essentially, you just have to put a zero in for each variable. So, I'm going to erase this one so we don't confuse it. Um, when y is equal to zero, I cover up that term, and I divide both sides by three to solve for x, and x is equal to eight. So I go ahead and put the eight in here, and when x is zero, three times zero right here is nothing, so that's gone. I divide both sides by a negative 4, and I find out that y is equal to a negative 6. So I put this negative 6 in here, and then I'll go ahead and plot these two ordered pairs. So when x is 8, y is 0 is right there. When x is 0 and y is a negative 6 is right there. Again, I typically get my straight edge out, but I'm trying to do a reasonable job of drawing a straight line. And I've graphed this linear equation. It's pretty nice putting zeros in for x and for y. So it, it lends itself. When it becomes a problem is when the coefficients in front of x and y do not divide evenly into the constant. 3 divides into 24 evenly. 4 divides into 24 evenly. But let's look at this next problem. And this is when I may not use the intercept method personally. So I have 2x minus 1 equals y. So first of all, the variable terms are not on one side and the constant on the other. It's in a different form. Um, it's okay, though. I'm going to go ahead and try uh, this method. I think I'm going to go ahead and put in a 0 for x first. So when I do that right here, 2 times 0 is nothing. So that's gone. 
and I have y equals a negative 1 when that's the case. So there you go. I'm all done. But when y equals 0 on this problem, when this is 0, what I have is on the left I have 2x minus 1 equals 0 on the right. And I have to solve this equation by adding 1 to both sides and then dividing both sides by 2. I'm running out of space here. And I find out that x is equal to 1 half. That's a little bit harder to graph that ordered pair, and I don't particularly care for it. You're welcome to um, put increments on your x-axis instead of using whole increments. I could call this, um, you know, I could call this 1 and this 2 and this 3 and this 4 and this 5. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. And I could graph that way. I could do it for both axes or just for 1. I think I'll just do it for the x-axis since x is the only one that has a fractional value. So here, the first order pair is when x is 0, y is a negative 1. Since a negative 1 for y is right there, I'll plot that point. And when x is a positive 1 half, that's right here, and y is 0. Because I've renamed this to be an increment of 1 for every two spaces, and I would connect those dots. That's one way to do it. If I had left my graph as is, it would just look a little bit differently. So I would have x is 0, y is a negative 1. And when x is 1 half, that would be, if this is 1, x is 1 half would be right there. And I have a graph of that equation. So intercepts, you know, pretty good method, um, except for sometimes it results in fractions. And then finally, I'd just like to share with you, using the intercept method, um, if I have a problem like this one, I sometimes find it a little bit easier to have my x and y terms on one side and my constant on the other. So I'm going to subtract 6y from both sides of this equation. I kind of hate to put that right underneath the 3x because they're not like terms. But I just want you to see, therefore, that on the left I have a negative 3x minus the 6y, so I'll just put them horizontally now, equals a negative 2. So I sometimes like to rearrange my equation so that when I go in here and try to find my intercepts, again, let's let x equal 0 first. So let's cover up that term. And you have a negative 6y equals a negative 2. And so when you divide both sides by a negative 6, right here you'll have a positive 1 third. Again, you know, not, an, not a nice value to be plotting on the rectangular coordinate system, but I can do it. And when y is 0, I'll be covering up that term right here. That'll all be gone. So I have a negative 3x equals a negative 2 for this one. And I'll divide both sides by a negative 3 to get x alone. And a negative divided by a negative is a positive, 2 thirds. I'll go ahead and graph that on this rectangular coordinate system. Really tough to do because I'm looking at thirds. Um, x is 0, uh, y is 1 third. You know, here's 1, so I'd probably do something like this. I would not use intercepts for this problem typically, but I wanted to demonstrate that it can be done for any problem. x is 2 thirds. So if this is 1, then here's 1 third, here's 2 thirds. x is 2 thirds, y is 0. Boy, is that tough. Um, so not a good um, method for this particular problem. It would be much better to choose um, values for x uh, that are fairly large or multiples of 3 and multiples of 6.